Hi guys, in this video we are going to prepare an Excel um, In Excel uh, there is a summary report which we want to prepare A mini dashboard kind of a stuff you can call it And uh, this we are going to do using the loops Using the loops and using the pivot I received uh, actually an email from uh, Santosh And this is uh, his uh, Excel file which he forwarded me uh, So he has employee names rate 1, rate 2, rate 3, rate 4, rate 5 And uh, guys uh, uh, here he has actually written that the output should be uh, like this and it would be great if you can delete the multiple headers so this is what actually he wants to do he wants to have the employee name and the rate one and then you know employee name rate two and then employee name rate three and then rate four rate five and so on right so this is how he wants to do it so when when you said actually santosh that you want to remove the duplicate so i thought of that why not to create the pivot right so we uh, what we are going to do we are going to create five pivot in the first pivot we will only include these two in the second pivot we are going to include the employee name and the rate 2 in the third we are going to include the employee name and the rate 3 and then we are going to compile it using the loops right so this is what exactly i want to do here so we'll start with the recording uh i can create the pivot right away but i'm going to uh, tell you that you know when you're going to make the pivots uh, basically you can take the help of this macro editor so click on the record macro guys and let me hit on the macro one so the macro is ready now what you want to do is um, I'm, I'm going to simply uh, select this and I'll go in the insert in the pivot table now we click on the pivot table and this is the table but by default it is selected new worksheet is there so we will create the pivot on the new worksheet I created the new pivot and then I'm going to drag this and I'm going to put the rate one here then I come here on this cell and I'm going to use the control shift right arrow and control shift down arrow we copy the data guys and i come back to my original sheet here and then uh, let's say i go to the the last cell of the section using the control down and i'm going to use the control up arrow i'm going to use the control control up arrow and then i move one cell down and here i'm going to paste the value okay so i'm generating all the code for you in the macro editor this is going to speed up the things and then once you have the format that's it so this these are all the steps we have recorded and uh, now what we want to do is i want to quickly stop the recording right and we can delete this now we can create the header here for the first your uh, the summary because we know that it is always going to be the rate one and so i'm gonna align them everything on the center part okay so this is how your report looks like now i want to delete every sheet so let's go ahead and delete the sheets this is how it is going to look like okay now you have the data here now one thing i also uh, observed in your that you have some spaces here i think you might not be even aware of it well uh, i try to remove the spaces because i don't think so they have any reason to be here so i'm going to remove all the leading and the trailing spaces guys using the trim function right so trim actually removes the leading and the trailing spaces so we'll just copy it and the paste value it here so now you have the new rate which doesn't have any basically the space in the end if i click here you can see that there is no space so now let's go ahead and uh, see the code actually in the developer tab in the visual basic window so i click on the module module one so this is what exactly the code looks like guys right now uh, we would like to focus on the one line rest all is fine if you see that this is the line active workbook dot pivot cache pivot cache is basically it's a source from where the pivot is gets created the data gets stored now if you look at this active workbook dot pivot cache it says create source type is by default it it, it is excel database because we are using the excel source data is from the sheet 1 r3 c1 r2 1 c6 now this looks a little complicated so i can change it this simply means that basically this a3 to uh f21 so we can define it so we can define as rng as range and set rng equals to you write the sheet name like this sheet and then you write the sheet 1 and dot range a3 to a 21 okay now what is the benefit of this if you ask me um well we can directly use this rng here 
to make it more presentable so remove the double quotes and this is how so this is called the range from where the pivot is going to be created now where you want to create the pivot so i want to create the pivot on the new sheet so when the sheet gets added here guys uh we will give it a name this is very useful so we will write here active sheet not named has to be equal to test we'll give it a name called test right so on the test sheet uh on so this is how i'm going to write you know this is how we write test sheet and then we will write it on the cell called fourth row and the one column right and i'm going to remove these double quotes from here as simple as that table and pivot table one you want to give uh, i'll give it aj let's say my name that's how it is created right we don't need these lines and uh, we don't need these lines so the pivot will work on in this way and uh, then let's have a look now uh, let us first run this and let's see so there we go sheet is going to be added and uh, the sheet name is going to be test as you can see here the test sheet is created so we will have the pivot created here on the row number four and you see that on the row number four we have the pivot now unable to get the pivot property well i think uh, i forgot to write here because your pivot table is now ajay so you will have to remove the name of it and here also actually you will need to write so i'm going to remove this pivot table one we're going to keep it ajay and then and, um, here also we can we can also keep it pivot table one that's fine i'm just actually trying to tell you and how you can modify the code and the belief everything is fine okay so uh let's go ahead and run the code i delete this and uh, we're going to run this quickly there we go so we have the pivot gets created now have a look the pivot is created right so here the sum of rate one is going to be created and uh unable to get this um again i think i have the same problem here um active sheet add all right so uh this is actually should be removed i removed the space using the trim you know from after the rate one so this has to be like this so um yeah this also needs to be removed right there we go we got the sum of rate one so these are the things actually you need to take care of better you do all the things and then record the macro okay so here we are going ahead and uh let me just use this now from the a4 now we don't want on the from the a4 actually we want it from the a5 because i don't want to include the headers in copy and paste guys so we're gonna have the this a5 now this line you know that if you if you have watched my vb introduction series or if you are a programmer then you know that this is going to work as control shift right arrow so we'll have the complete data copied and this data is going to be copied we will be back on the sheet one and then from the sheet one basically uh if i show you just let me just yeah so now here what will happen uh you don't got to be on the l11 that's fine we will remove this this actually got recorded in our macro so we don't need this line now from the l10 lakh 48 thousand cell you know this is going to move up so i'll just delete these two lines so first it goes to the you know the last cell you can, you can see here and from there it is going to move up right so it moves up and then it is going to paste the data but this time what we want actually we want one cell down because this is the header right so instead of writing like this we can also write like this dot offset one row down and the zero column on the same column you got to select right so what will happen when i run this line you see that my cursor would be on the l2 okay so let me just end this and let's start the code again and uh, i also want to i think there's some dot end first of all you write like this excel up it will all in the upward direction and when it moves to the upward direction it has to go one cell down because you will have your header so this is the line we need to write and then we're going to paste the value so i just remove all these chunk of the lines from here i'll keep it simple that paste it as a value okay and we don't need the by the way the formatting but if you need it you can keep the line but i will not like to do that okay now this is fine 
Now, uh, I also want to tell you, um, once it is done, I would like to create a one more macro here, compile data. Call compile. And this is going to be created in the different macros. So I just cut it. And here I'm going to write that macro, sub compile. There's no actually specific reason for that. It's just that when you bifurcate the macros, you know, when you segregate the things, then it looks nice. So here we're going to paste the data. Okay, so let me delete the sheet and uh, let's now run the board. Okay, there we go. So the sheet is added in the background as you can see. Sheet is renamed as test. The pivot is going to be created. There we go. Now we selected the entire data, including the grand totals. We come back to the sheet one and once we come back to the sheet one, we will be compiling the data. So the macro will go in the compile and then from here, everything starts. Now, the moment I run this line, it should be on the L2 and it has pasted the data. Again, guys, you will have to use the same line to go to the last cell. So this time, basically, you won't go to the next line so you don't need the offset. You simply write dot select. Okay. Now, if I execute this line, you will be on the last field value. Of the end column which is grand total right you can see that the cursor is in the grand total so here i'm going to write condition that if active cell dot value it, because we don't need the grand total right so i'm going to write a grand total please ensure that it's a case sensitive thing in vba so you should be perfect on that so the active cell dot value has to be equals to again employee and from this active cell, the next column, so which is offset, on the same row but on the column 1, we would like to write here a value called rate. And then you join it with some variable. So I'm going to write it rate variable, let's say. Rate var. Okay. So this should be 1 in the beginning. Uh, it should be 2 actually. So I'm going to write here on the top of this, we will define it as a public rate 1 rate var as long and we are going to start here that rate var the moment it starts it should be equals to 2 because rate 1 is already written on the top and then once it executes it should be incremented by 1 so that the next time we should have a rate 3 and 4 and so on right now if you don't have any idea why I declared on the top why not within the circle then please go ahead and watch the video called like of a variable because I want to control this from both the macros because you know you're calling from one macro to the other so if I'm going to create it as a local it will be destroyed and I want to keep it that's the first thing now similarly one more thing guys uh, we, we need to do now once the macro runs we want to create one more pivot right because I want to run pivot five times so you got to do one thing um, you got to here create a loop so for run equals to one to five because i want to run it five times as simple as that and i'm going to declare as run as on the top as law okay and uh, so here the call compile after the call compile you write next so that the loop should run five times okay and the five times when the loop is going to run you know that you need the sum of rate two and 3 and 4. So this also needs to be removed. We need to put here some variables. So I'm going to put the JJ. Join it with the JJ. And here as well. So we are going to delete this one. I want to make it dynamic and JJ. And once we did that, we would like to increment the JJ for the next loop. JJ equals to JJ plus 1. Right? But when it starts, so I'm going to declare. When it starts, it should start with the 1. Right, it's a colon actually, not a semicolon, and uh, so I will remove it. Yeah, that's how it is. Okay, so this is how the loop will work. Okay, now um, that's it. I think uh, we are done with this, and um, um, all right. So let's go ahead and run this code, and uh, I will delete this. And I will delete this as well. So ensure that, you know, your column should be, uh, first it should be deleted. So when you define here, 
when you when you say that sheet sheet one, you are on the sheet one and dot select. So the range from your L two to M let's say ten thousand. Okay? Because I don't think so you have this much of data. So it should be cleared first. Selection dot clear context. This is a very important line. Otherwise the data will keep on compiling every time you run. So from here L two to M ten thousand we're gonna run this so there we go guys and uh, now it should be removed i hope as you can see the data is removed perfect okay so we have defined the range here which we're going to use now the loop is going to run for the first time now we are going to run it the pivot is created and uh, so here jj is one remember so we will have here sum of rate as one and there we go perfect so we got it and now the jj is going to be incremented by two and uh, we will wait for the second loop, then we will use this data. So now in the A5 it goes, it selects a copy of the data and uh, it comes back to the sheet. And uh, variable not defined. All right, so which variable I have defined? I think I forgot to define the read var. So um, I defined it, but this typo mistake, I believe. Oh, uh, read var. Okay, so K is actually a type of mistake. This should be like this. Okay, wait. Block if without index. Oh, I should have written the else also because, you know, else, else is an important part of if. So if the condition is not true, then what should happen? So else and if. Nothing should happen. There we go. So now it, it goes to the L2, as you know, the value will be pasted. Again, you will be on the last row using this code. You are on the grand total. It is a grand total. So we will have here employee name and the next cell, which is this cell, it should have rate 2. Perfect. Now we have incremented the rate var also because next time it should be 3. There we go. Enter. Next. It comes back to the original macro. Next means now the run is going to run for the second time, right? This second time. So again, we will have the sheet getting added. So now here we have a problem guys i'll show you what is the problem now when you're going to add the sheet the sheet will be added oh just a second yeah the sheet will be added but the sheet cannot be renamed as test because it is already you know renamed as test so here we will have a problem so now what we need to do is um basically uh we will delete this sheet if it exists okay uh so when you add the sheet uh, or before adding the sheet you need to do one thing you need to go to the sheet called test dot select okay and if the active sheet dot name equals to test then active sheet dot delete please delete it okay now when the first time this macro is going to run you know that if you if you're going to send this to somebody you will send the data like this you know everything going to be neat and clean so that time this line will give you the error because sheet test is not there so that is why uh in the beginning we will write on error resume next right i hope you know this if you don't have any idea about it please go to the excel vb introduction series all error resume next simply means that whenever there is some error then just pass bypass that don't stop okay so this we use when we know that there will, will be an error right and I, i'm not liking the same i forgot to write this great pivot always give it a good name okay so now i think we are done with this and um, so when you have a one condition you don't have to write else this is again i'm telling you you see i have written everything in one line you can write it because uh, i just want that if this is the test name then this this should happen i don't need anything else so you don't have to write by pressing the enter then you because then in that case you will have to write else and if also so in this way you can avoid it right so let's go ahead and do the things okay so this is going to clear the data in the background that's fine you see that the data is cleared okay so now we'll run this now sheet test is not there but the error you know did not come why because you said on error is unique this is the trick guys and you know that right now you're on the active sheet and the active sheet name is also not test so then 
after then nothing will happen it will not go in this line active sheet dot delete you see that is what that is what you know is a, is the trick all about the next time when i run this you see this is going to be very useful so the sheet is added now and you know that now the pivot is going to be added so let me quickly run this you know that the data is going to be copied now we are on the compile mode so now this goes to here the data is pasted brand total should be removed with the employee name everything looks good to me and the next now the turn for the next run is going to be two second loop we are running guys so once again uh, i will select the test sheet now this time the test sheet is created because you are running the loop okay second time so second time it goes in the test and uh, now obviously active sheet name is test again i'm saying f is a case sensitive so please write the correct name it should not be the case that you are writing uh, you are you are when you when you said that active sheet dot name equals to test and here i mean test t e s t in the small and here you are writing it in the capital letters then you will have a problem okay so these are the things you need to take care of so if the name is test obviously it is you see that it is going to delete so delete this so we don't need this pop ups next time i will make ensure that this should come and the sheet should be deleted because then you will have to delete it five times and it's very awkward so the sheet is going to be added and this sheet now will have the test name now if you if you look at this uh, the table you know it's going to create the blank table and if i go down and show you what i wanted to show actually now look at this guys what is the value in the variable it's 2 when the first time it ran what was the value it was 1 so now here you will have a sum of rate 2 and the next time it will have the sum of rate 3 right so the rest of the steps you already know this is going to happen so call compile and uh just move it here yeah now this will go to the last row from this l and it is going to paste the values the values are pasted again this line takes to the last value it is a grand total so grand total should be replaced with employee name and the rate 3 right because this is also a variable which you are incrementing again now i have incremented it it is going to be 4 so in this way your this entire stuff is going to be you know keep running so again you will be back on the sheet test and you know that the sheet test is going to be selected and we are going to delete it so this is going to be deleted let me run this quickly delete delete and that's it guys now if you have a look here your data is compiled now you don't need the last row so just delete it you can record the macro also for that or just last time any runs you know come here and delete it i will not do that part it's very simple but but you see that the data is there now the formatting part as i uh, i see that santosh has given the yellow color so you can also do that just record the macro how to give the color so whenever you are actually going on the second loop before you go to the second loop just give them the color that's very simple right so this is how guys you can do that the data is compiled right now i was about to tell you that a um, couple of things um first of all i don't need that display so we can off it x application dot um, display alert equals to false this line makes ensure that you shouldn't be getting the display alerts again and again now there are two things if you want to uh, create here the button that's fine then you are done with this right but if you want to create this on the auto mode for example if i create a button here insert and i'm going to create the button here that's it right click and go to the sign macro and this is the macro right so when i click on this see what happens let me delete this first now this is how the data would look like right so if i click it you see that this is going to happen did you get any prompt that you know the file is going to be deleted you are not getting any prompt so this is how application dot display alert equals to false will work for you now if you want that now any any time if you change any value for example i'm going to change this value as a uh, 200 tooth or 2000 so any changes in this if i run it what will happen let's have a look are we going to get the new value so i have to find this santosh and uh, santosh is uh, for the rate 1 it says 
and um, okay I believe uh, this Sadosh is that's the one right it should be 30 it should be 2000 actually so it's not updating uh, well well we can check on that it is not possible um okay let us go ahead and run this again guys so let me run this again there we go and uh, this is going to be deleted okay perfect and then the loop is going to run for the first time we have the test it is going to be deleted the sheet is added so we have here the pivot I want to see what is it is going to generate so it is going to generate what it is going to generate the rate 1 and in the rate we still have 3071 okay that's when 3017 shouldn't be there right we should be able to see uh, 2000 actually oh I see it this must be repeated somewhere in the table I believe let's have a look Santosh is here and uh, yeah that's here yeah that that's why i was thinking <laughs> so pivot actually is summing up them right so this is going to be added with this so we have 3017 oh yeah that means that was correct actually all right so that's fine let me just delete this now so this is the first you uh, this is the first method you can create the macro by clicking the button or what what else you can do if you want to create it whenever this workbook gets opened you know then this should happen so just right here, just go to this workbook and select this workbook. And in the workbook open, just write the call create pivot. I mean, whatever the macro name you are going to, you have given here, create pivot. Right? That's the macro name. Let me copy this and paste it here again, just to avoid any spelling mistake. So whenever this workbook gets open, guys, the, the every everything will run by itself. Okay. So right now it's totally blank as you can see. Uh, let me close this. I want to save this. Click on the low because we have to change the extension of this. Um, make it Excel same. I save the file. And now I'm going to simply run this. So. Uh, yeah, that's the one. Read.xlsm. Click R, R. Yeah, that's the one. So I'm opening it, double click on this and this is getting opened. Now when it gets opened, if the macro works, you know, you have, will have the data. You can see here, we have got the data. Perfect. No need to click anywhere, right? It will automatically do everything for you. If you do some changes and close the file and again open it, those changes will reflect here. So that's it for now guys and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Any questions you have, let me know about it. And please subscribe to the channel and watch all those amazing videos. For the beginners, we have the videos. For the intimidated users, we have. And of course, for the advanced, we definitely have it. Right? Okay, thank you so much guys for watching. Bye-bye.